In today's video, I am going to show you how to stop nutrient deficiencies in your garden before you have even planted it. So for today, what we're going to do is we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how that I make my bedding for my red wigglers. I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how I make my normal bedding. And then we're gonna add some extra things so that we can prevent those nutrient deficiencies later. All these ingredients or are organic and they will take time to break down. So we're gonna feed them to the worms and the worms are gonna break it down for us. And then we're gonna be ready for spring. So let me get started making the bedding. We're gonna start with about five gallons of shredded cardboard. Now I just run this through my um, regular paper shredder, but it's a 24, you can use anything from 18 to 24 page shredders. I do have the link to the one that I use down below in the uh, description. So first we start off with this dry bedding. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add some of the water usually takes about one gallon for a five gallon depending on what kind of paper or substrate you're using um, then I am going to go ahead and add my kelp meal now this this addition is part of my normal addition I use the liquid seaweed on everything from my orchids to my bonsais to the um, the bedding here that I make for the worms. It is a really good product. Um, I do also have that linked below in the Amazon. I go through about four or five bottles of it a year. If I went and started to use the solid um, powdered version of kelp, it might be a little bit cheaper, but it is also not as easy to use. Now let's go get the coconut guar. Okay, so I have about one gallon or four liters of the um, small coconut coir. I usually uh, sift it out and use the big pieces for the bonsais and the little pieces go to the worms. So this is what this is going to do, not only for your worm bin, but also for your garden is to add porosity to your soil. So basically you're gonna help it drain more and you're also going to help, you know, keep the water absorbed for longer periods of time so your plants can absorb it. And I'm just gonna mix that completely up. That way when you have worm bedding, if you ever had your worm bedding and uh, basically it sticks together, you know, this will solve that problem for you. It's not necessary, but it does make things easier. So we're just gonna get that completely mixed up there. And I may have to add more water later because the coconut coir was pretty dry. Okay, next. I'm going to add about a shot glass of the uh, unsulfured molasses here. I'm gonna mix that up first because otherwise it is going to stay in a big clump and uh, you can imagine uh, you've made cookies before. If you don't mix this stuff in really well, you get one big lump. So I'm gonna mix that up and then we're gonna add that. Now the purpose of the molasses is to give the microbes and the fungi something to eat um, in the bedding until the bedding starts to break down itself. Okay, next what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my castings and I'm going to run them through this makeshift um, filter. Uh, I just want the microbes from the from the castings. I don't I don't want any of the cocoons or anything. So I'm just going to make like a bit of a tea with that, just enough to extract the microbes to get them started. And then we're going to add that in there. Now comes the the extra stuff. So first of all, like with most of my castings, I am going to add eggshell. And this turns out to be about a quarter of a cup or about two shot glasses. And not only is this uh, grit for the worms, but it is also going to break down in the castings and in the soil and feed your plants, giving them both calcium and sulfur. All right, next up. Next up is the gypsum. Now gypsum is something that I've just recently gotten into and basically it's powder. I'm not exactly sure if it's the same stuff they make drywall out of, 
but where I live my soil is well above seven and most plants do better at six to seven. So what I'm doing here is I'm adding calcium and um, it is not going to raise the pH. Some forms of lime that you can add for calcium to your garden will raise the pH and I grow a lot of peppers and a lot of tomatoes and they do not like that. So I, you know, am fighting my native soil, uh, the pH. So with gypsum, it won't raise the pH. It will keep it the same. So that is good. So the next is the alfalfa. Now, because this is a ground plant, it is going to give us some nitrogen in there for the microbes to eat, as well as for the worms to eat. I put it in my worm chow as well. But it's, it's really good to kind of start uh, pre-composting. Now, I just put a tiny little bit in here so it's not going to heat up. But if you did want it to heat up, you could double or triple the dose um, if you were going to try and uh, keep a bin warm outside. When I did my outside bin check for the last time, I did put quite a bit of the alfalfa meal in there, hoping that it would create sort of a hot compost to keep the worms warm in the winter. But in this case, what we're doing is we are just building the bedding uh, so that it will break down easily for the worms and then also provide nutrients and other beneficials for your plants. Next up is the azomite. Now, they call it azomite because it's supposed to have A to Z micronutrients and there are a ton of them. I'll put a little picture inset up there. But basically, all the tiny little things that you wouldn't want to spend money to add separately, um, this does give them that extra, all the tiny little nutrients that you just need, you know, micro percentages of. Okay. And last but not least is the uh, green sand. Now, a lot of times this is a, called glauconite, if you want to look up what glauconite is. But this is this comes from the ocean, I believe. And it is a mineral that has iron as well as potassium in it. And one of the things that you can get if you've ever used for your lawn, use like iron green or something like that and everything instantly greens up. That's because the chlorophyll molecule needs the iron. So this will help you know, it's, it can be used as, you know, nutrients for the worms, but this stuff takes, you know, months to break down, whether it be the azomite or the gypsum or the green sand or the eggshell, it all takes months to break down to be usable for plants. So we might as well get it started before we even start the garden. So this is enough bedding for my red wigglers for the next couple of feedings. So let's go look at those red wigglers and then give them all of our hard work. Okay, so here we are at the Red Wigglers. And as you can see, we have our little friend, the isopod. And uh, I don't know if this is a pill bug or a sow bug. I think it's a pill bug. Let's see, let, he's not, he doesn't seem to be afraid of me, so he's not turning into a pill, so maybe he's a sow bug. So let's look and see what the Red Wigglers have been doing since we uh, last looked in on them. The DIY bin is getting old and the little screens that I put on are falling off. We don't really need, I don't feel as though I really need them in, but uh, I'm gonna just pull that out as I find it. So let's kind of uh, look through here and see what we've got. We've got some avocado pits that are starting to break down just a tiny little bit. It takes about three to six months to get them to completely go away. You don't usually see a worm on it, uh, but you do, uh, maybe the other bin critters get it. Here's some corn. I actually don't even remember when I put this in here. But look at that. Isn't that cute? Little worms are in there playing. I actually do think that worms kind of like to play with things. Uh, put in the comments below if you agree with that. It seems like, you know, they've got no good reason to do some of the things they do, playing in burlap and and the like, uh, but they do seem to crawl in and out of things and enjoy the different textures and, and whatnot. Well, look, they went and made a, lot, a liar out of me. There they are inside of an avocado uh, pit. Well, I'm gonna leave that intact so they have some place to play. So far, I'm not finding a lot of uh, 
you know, fast food, so it looks like it is definitely time to feed again. The unfrozen potato shreds are a very slow food. The moisture's looking great. Um, I think that I've learned my lessons from the previous years in regards to uh, moisture, finally. Uh, I always learn uh, the hard way. Oh, looks like they wanted to grow me an avocado tree. But, you know, and I will, you know, a lot of people have a lot of questions when they first get going into worm farming. Oh, there's a little cocoon right there. And uh, that's great because I know that I watched a lot of YouTube channels as I was getting started and I'm, you know, I'm very grateful that all of them, most of which who aren't around anymore, they've uh, quit their channels like uh, Emily or um, a lot of them. So anyway, I'm glad that people answered questions. So if you do have questions about your new worm bin or your journey to become a worm farmer, uh, please put those in the comments below. This is a year old top of a pumpkin. So these guys look like they've uh, gone through a lot of their food here. Let's see what the next layer down looks like. Okay, now one of the experiments that I tried last time was to put these little placeholders in there to keep it from compressing too much, maybe give the worms a little bit more volume in here. Looks like it's worked. Now we just, just remade this whole bed the last time. So everything is obviously very much in progress and it's, it's, it's obvious here that you can see a lot of paper shreds that are very identifiable, but they're getting into that. I mean, they're making nice castings already. Uh, I'll put below how many pounds of worms there are in here. I think it's about four or five, but they are basically throughout the entire system. I don't try to get, you know, it's not like a normal vermi hut or something like that. I'm not sure what the difference is between my DIY system and a regular vermi hut, but mine tend to go wherever they want to go. And uh, I fought it for a while, but then I just realized it's their house, let them do what they want. So I got everything. There's nothing foul here. Looking, make sure everything is aerobic. Make sure there's no food that, you know, is needing longer to be eaten. Looks like those little cat or these little things are working. I just uh, got some water pipe from the store and then cut it into these lengths, measuring how tall the lip of the, uh, the side of the bin was. And that was kind of what I went by. Let's look at the bottom layer. All right, there we are. And they are really, it's really wet down here. And you can see what the castings look like from just feeding cardboard and paper. The color of it is so much different than when you feed leaves. Um, someday I will get around to sending off, you know, the castings from leaves versus paper to see if there's a nutrient difference. But uh, as we, we pretty much all know that the worm poop is the important part. So, um, but wow, this is really, really wet down here. I think I'm going to add a little bit of dry coconut car down here to sop this up. I don't want this going anaerobic because this is very, very wet. Does not, that is disturbingly wet in my opinion. So let me get some dry coconut coir. There we go. And if you don't have coconut coir, you can just put in dry paper uh, that works as well. You might need more paper than coconut coir to adjust the moisture this far, but uh, you know, it will work fine. You don't need to buy it. I think I went quite a long time without using coconut coir and the worms were just fine. Okay, well, I definitely don't wanna feed down here and add to the water. So let's reassemble this and we'll feed on the top. Let's move everything over to one side. I usually do try and feed on one side or the other so that if the worms don't like the food or it you know, heats up or is too acidic or what have you, they can get away from it. They can go over here, they can go deeper, and they can get away from it.
Okay, we've got a good mixture of slow and fast food here. We've got a mango. We've even got a leaf from my rubber tree plant. I went and got a box of uh, mixed tropical fruit, and this is a cacao pod. We'll have to watch and see how that goes. Um, part of a dragon fruit, the outside, more cacao pod, and uh, a big, huge, you know, seed. Well, let's see if we can grow this one. I've lost a couple this winter. So let's go get them some of that new bedding that we just made. Normally I like to age it for a couple of weeks, but I uh, ran out and forgot to make some. So we're just gonna have to wing it with the uh, nutrients, etc., that we added, as well as the, the worm castings. The microbes in this should get started pretty fast. Um, so that shouldn't be a problem that the bedding has not been aged. All right, one more just to make sure that everything is topped up good so that the bugs and the undesirable, we don't want the undesirable bugs to smell the new food. So that's why I'm burying it so deep because there's quite a few things that are a little bit stinky. If you wanna see more about the red wigglers, I have a playlist that you can watch right over there. And if you wanna watch more about my bedding and also my worm tea, I have a playlist right over there. If you like the video, give it a muddy thumbs up. And if you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you wanna know exactly what I'm doing, when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. All right guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and everybody have a good day.